we are doing 7-4 today. This is division properties. Um, I think in my head, it relates very closely to the multiplication property. When we are multiplying, if I have like a to the third times a to the fifth, what do you do with those two exponents? You add them. Okay, so when multiplying, we add. When dividing, any guesses? We subtract. Okay, so that's the property that we're going to focus on largely today um, is division. So there's going to be a big division bar, and we're going to be actually subtracting our exponents, um, which is what this is saying. So if I have 2 to the 6th over 2 squared, it's really 2 to the 6 minus 2, which would be 2 to the 4th power. Okay, so this is equal to that. Um, this gets a little trickier. When your bigger number is on bottom, if you're subtracting, you'll get a negative. When you get x to the negative third, then you flip it. Now, here's how I like to think of this. If I have um, x to the fifth over x to the eighth, you are more than welcome to go five minus eight is negative three, and then flip it, okay? That's the way the book would tell you to do it. The way I do it is not like that. I avoid the negatives altogether because what happens is it's essentially this. I should have picked a different number. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna rewrite this. X to the third over X to the fourth. X to the third is X times X times X. X to the fourth is X times X times X times X, right? What I would do is I would call this one, I would call that one, I would call that one, and I have how many x's left on the bottom? One, okay? Now look at this. If I subtract those, my number is what? One, well, negative one. But if I go four minus three, it's a positive one. So here's how I look at it. I think if I have x to the 15th over x to the 18th, I can subtract them as a positive and keep that number, that exponent, with the bigger starting number because it's essentially taking those x to the 15th away and the x to the third that you're left with should be, in this case, on the bottom. Is that making sense, how I do it? So it would be 1 over x to the third. Absolutely. You may do it either way. Um, if you want to work with the negative, then work with the negative. That's totally fine. Um, just know that sometimes I'm going to do it the way that my brain does it, and maybe that will be not the way your brain does it. Um, let me show you on this one. I'm going to go to B. Okay, we'll go back to A. On letter B, you have 2 and 5. Okay? You also have 3 and 4, because you need the same base when you're doing this. So if I have m to the second over m to the fifth, if you subtract those, there's a difference of three. Where does that m to the third need to go? On the bottom, okay? If I go five minus two, my m to the third would be on the bottom. Now the book would say do it this way. m to the two minus five is m to the negative third which is one over m to the third, okay? You are welcome to walk through that process every single time if you want. I just simplify it and say, if I subtract these, keep my number with the bigger one, right? m to the fifth is on bottom, m to the second is on top. Their difference is three, put it on the bottom because there's more on the bottom. Does that make sense how I'm doing that? Yeah. If it doesn't, ignore it and just do it the way the book would do it, okay? Um, What's this one going to become? It's a one. Where? On top, right? As a numerator. n to the fourth over n to the third is n to the four minus three, which is n to the first. You don't technically need the one there because um, n to the first is n. So this would be n over m to the third. Okay? Okay, go back to a. 
What do you do with those exponents? <clears throat> Subtract. Okay, so this is x to the 5 halves minus 2. Um, if you don't know 5 halves minus 2 off the top of your head, that's okay. You have two options. One, you can plug it into your calculator. If you go 5 halves, where's my calculator? behind my coffee cup. Okay, so if I go 5 halves minus 2, my calculator tells me 0.5. We don't want decimals. What is 0.5? One, One half. Do you know how to turn it into a fraction without you having to turn it into a fraction? There's a button on your calculator. I need to see one of your calculators. Can I borrow that? There's a button on your calculator. It's the PRB button. Ooh. What? Okay, right above PRB, it says this. F to D, that's fraction to decimal or decimal to fraction. So if you type this in, 5 divided by 2 minus 2, hit enter, you'll get 0.5. Then you go second and that PRB button. Let me make sure that that's how it's going to work out on yours. That's how it works on mine. 5 divided by 2 minus 2 is 0.5. Second, PRB, enter, 1 half. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, if you need help plugging that in, let me know later, and I will gladly help you plug it in. Um, all that to say, this comes out to x to the 1 half power. Right? 5 halves minus 2 is 1 half. 0.5, same thing. Any questions on that? Okay. Head over here. So this is y to the, what are you doing with 3 fourths and 1 half? Subtracting. 3 fourths minus 1 half. Again, if you want to plug it into your calculator, I don't mind that. What is one half in terms of fourths? If we find a common denominator, it's how many fourths? Two fourths. So three fourths minus two fourths is one fourth. So this one's pretty straightforward. Y to the one fourth power. Um, again, I don't care if you use your calculator to help you with fractions. You're going to have a calculator most of your life, right? It's okay. Um, all right. Letter D. So this is D to the 7 halves divided by D to the 3rd. What do you do? Subtract. D to the 7 halves minus 3. Um, can you tell me how many halves 3 is? The number 3 is how many halves? It's 6, right? The number three is the same as six halves, six over two. So if you want a common denominator, you would say D to the seven halves minus six halves is what? D to the one half. Again, you could plug that into your calculator and then that second PRB button will turn it into a fraction for you if you want, or you can just find a common denominator and subtract D to the one half. Okay, I want you to try letter E. So A to the negative third times B to the seventh divided by A to the fifth times B squared. See if you can figure out what that should look like. And if you get that one, try F as well. one's a little bit different because you've got a negative and a positive with your A's there. Which bone? 
Yeah, bring it up here. Um, what did you get? Mm -hmm. B to the fifth over A to the eighth. Did you get that? So here's what you're doing. Take your A's. If you're going to set it as the way the book would do it, you would do A to the negative three minus five. Okay. For your B's, you would go B to the seven minus two. So that is A to the negative eighth and B to the fifth. What do you have to do with A to the negative eighth? Can you have a negative exponent? Put it on the bottom. We're going to move it down, okay? So this is going to be b to the fifth on top. This a to the negative eighth is going to be a to the positive eighth on bottom. Okay? Negatives have to move. Your uh, negative exponents have to move. All right, take a look at letter F then. Um, again, if we're subtracting, what is k? k to what power? The first. If there's nothing there, it's a 1, okay? So you're going k to the 6 minus 1 times j to the 2 minus 5. So that's k to what power? The fifth, right? 6 minus 1, k to the fifth, j to the negative third, okay? So you're almost there, but you cannot leave a negative. K to the fifth will be your numerator. J to the positive third will be your denominator. Do we have that? Thanks, Allie. Caught a head nod. Okay. Um, this one looks fancier. It's essentially doing the same thing, um, just with more variables involved and maybe a couple little different uh, things working out. What is x to the fourth divided by x to the fourth? One. It's one, okay? You can think of it as subtraction. x to the four minus four is x to the zero. What is anything to the zero power? One, one okay? So essentially that's going to go away. Um, but it's good to have the work there. This one oops, is going to be y to the negative 1. Here's where a lot of mistakes get made. You are subtracting. So what's happening in this problem? You're adding. It's minus a negative 5, so you're actually adding that. right? Minus a negative is plus a positive. <clears throat> so that's going to be your y's. I'll simplify that in a minute. Your z's would be z to the what power? Seven. The seventh. It's eight minus one. Okay, so we're here. Let's simplify that. Uh, your y becomes y to what power? The fourth. the fourth. We already said z to the seventh. So x to the zero is one y to the fourth, z to the seventh. There's nothing that has to move because we don't have a negative exponent anymore. So you're done. It's fun, right? I love these. Um, how come you don't keep the one like, in like, the answer? Because it doesn't change anything. If you kept it, it would look like this, right? But one times anything is itself. So the simplest version would be without the one there. You could leave it there. I don't mark it off if you leave the one in there, but you don't need it. Okay, <clears throat> good old word problems. Ready for this? Here's what it says. Um, population density describes the number of people per unit area. During one year, the population of Angola was 1.21 times 10 to the seventh people. The area of Angola is 4.81 times 10 to the fifth. Um, so what you're doing for population density is you're dividing that. Um, just to note, which number is bigger? The 10 to the 7th one, right? People see this and they go, oh, wait, this is bigger than this. That doesn't make sense to divide it that way. But 10 to the 7th, that's seven zeros, seven decimal places, right? Versus 10 to the 5th is only five decimal places behind that one. Um, so just 
be aware of that. It looks backwards, but it truly is the bigger divided by the smaller. So you're going to go 1.21 times 10 to the seventh divided by 4.81 times 10 to the fifth. Okay, now here's where there can be a little bit of confusion. We said when we're dividing with exponents, we subtract them. What do we do with this? You divide it, okay? This is just numbers that we're dividing. So just divide those numbers. You're gonna type into your calculator 1.21 divided by 4.81, and you get this number. So 0.2516, we'll say. Okay, um, and then we'll simplify this. What is 10 to the seventh divided by 10 to the fifth? 10 to the second, subtract the seven and the five. So times 10 to the second power. Is that in scientific notation? Not quite. We need a number between 1 and 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our decimal point 1 to the right. So this equals 2.516 or 2.5, whatever. Um, oh, I changed how I wrote that. Um, so the question is, if I'm moving 1 to the right here, then it's what that I'm multiplying by, 10 to the other way. If you move your decimal point to the right, you gotta move your number on a number line, right? Zero, one, two, three. This two, we gotta move the other way. You move it the opposite of the way you moved your decimal point. So if I'm moving my decimal point to the right, I gotta move on the left to the number line. So 2.516 times 10 to the first. Now. That's scientific notation, but that's kind of a silly way to write this answer because what is that actually saying? Times 10, zero. times 10, right? 10 to the first is times 10. So 2.516 times 10 is about 25 people, right? Population density. Um, so yes, this is the answer if we're leaving it in scientific notation, but if you think about we're just multiplying by 10, this is really a more reasonable answer there. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not even going to do that second one right now. We're going to move on to this. So yesterday, was it yesterday? Man, this week is, my timeline is very strange. Yesterday we did something like this, 2y to the third power, right? So we were multiplying an expression, a whole thing, to a power, what did you have to do with this? 2y to the third. You have to distribute that 2 to both things, okay? So this became 2 to the third and y to the third or 8y to the third. This second property is the exact same thing, but now with division, okay? So it's like saying x divided by y to the third power you're going to take x to the third and y to the third. Okay, here's y. But I'm not going to make you walk me through that every time. The idea is we shouldn't have to do all these steps to get there. It will always follow this same pattern. So if it's 3 fifths to the third power, we're going to take 3 to the third and get 27. We're going to take 5 to the third and get 125. And that will be your answer, 27 over 125. Okay. Same is true if it's a variable, x to the fifth and y to the fifth. So you take, if it's in parentheses, you take that power to everything in those parentheses. Okay? We're going to try that. So take a look at A. What am I going to do? Distribute the three. Okay, so that three, so we're going to go z to the two-thirds to the third, over what? Five to the third. Okay. And then if you can simplify something there, you simplify it. What is two thirds times three? You can plug it into your calculator if you don't know. It's two, right? Two over three times three over one is six over three, which is two. Okay. So this is z squared. 
Do you know what five to the third power is off the top of your head? 125. So that whole thing simplifies to z squared over 125. Okay? You try it on letter B. What is that going to simplify to? And then tell your neighbor and see if they got the same thing. Sophia, what'd you get? Okay, Lily, what'd you get? Yes. So four squared over x to the third squared, right? So 16 over x, when it's a power to a power, you multiply them. So x to the sixth power. Okay? Yeah. How did what? Six. You multiply them. So you multiply three and two because you're going to take it to the, the x to the third gets taken to the second power. X to the third and you square it. So a power to a power, you multiply. If it was x to the third times x to the third, then you add, or x to the second, I guess, if we're keeping our numbers the same. Then you would add them together. But when they have the same base and it's a power to a power, then you multiply. Okay. There's a couple ways you could do this one. Um, I'm kind of curious which way you would do because I would like to do it the way you would do it, um, but I also feel like my way is better. <laughs> so I don't know if your way is my way. Um, what would you do, Khalees? Oh, were you going to ask me a question? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Is the negative exponent okay now, or do we have to do No, we got to get rid of a negative so exponent. Just Not the whole thing on bottom, because the whole thing's being taken to a negative. So that means this is being taken to a negative too. So put that one on top, right? Okay, so here's how I would do it. You can disagree with me, and if you do disagree with me, I would like to hear that, okay? Um, this is what I would do on this one. Let me get this out of here. I would take, because the exponent, ay, ay, ay. Uh, because the exponent's negative, okay? We're going to move things, so I would flip it over right off the bat. I would call it y to the fourth and 2x to the sixth. If I do that, what power am I taking everything to? The positive third. I like it that way. Does anyone think they would rather distribute a negative three and flip them all individually? Sydney would flip them all individually. Anybody else? You would flip them all individually. You would flip them all individually. You would flip them all. You, you what? It keeps the same pattern with like all the other, like the, like all the other. Just taking it to the power. Okay. Um, I'll show you both ways. Does that sound good? So if you do it this way, no, is that a bad idea? Is that more confusion if I show you both ways? Just ignore me if you don't like this way, okay? Um, this one is going to be y to the 12th. Don't forget, here's the thing that gets left off, I think, the most on these problems, is you're taking this 2 to the, three po the third power also. So 2 to the third. X to what? The what? 18. 6 times 3, okay? Um, so if you do it this way, you have y to the 12th over 8, x to the 18th, and you're done, Okay? If you want to do it the other way, if you want to distribute the negative 3 first, here's how you do it. Take this, so 2 to the negative 3rd. Take this, x to the negative 18th. Take this, y to the negative 12th. Okay, so you have all the negatives. Now simplify that. So 2 to the negative 3rd is 1 over 2 to the positive 3rd x to the negative 18th is 1 over x to the 18th. y to the negative 12th has to move up as y to the 12th. So that's going to be y to the 12th over 8 x to the 18th. So we're going to get to the same spot. It's just a matter of do you want to get rid of the negative first or do you want to get rid of the parentheses first? Okay? 
Okay, so honest opinion right now, now that you've seen both ways, who thinks they would flip it over and get rid of the negative first? Okay, who thinks they would distribute the negative first? A lot of you didn't vote. Wait, I would get the question. So I flipped this because of the negative right off the bat. And that got rid of my negative, right? The other option is you would take that negative three and distribute it, which gets you this first. So now you have negatives in three different places and then you would flip them. No. You don't like that way. I don't like that way either, but lots of people do like that way. So I'll try to mix it up. I'll try to do it both ways. Um, how about you do it whichever way you like better on this one? Cause it's the same type of problem. Go. Leave your phone up here. Okay, I'm going to flip my order just for the sake of those that like to do it the other way. So if you distributed first, that would be A to the negative second over 5 to the negative second and B to the negative second. Make sure it goes to the 5 too, okay? Um, so now you can do the flipping. So a to the negative second is gonna put a squared on bottom. Five to the negative second on bottom is gonna put five squared on top. And b to the negative second on bottom is gonna put b squared on top. So you have 25 b squared over a squared. Make sense that way? Okay. Um, do you wanna see it the other way? Anyone wanna see it the other way where you flip first? Flip it, okay. So if we flip it first, it's 5b over a, and now we're taking it to the positive 2 instead, okay? So distribute that now, and that's going to be 5 squared b squared over a squared. So 25 b squared over a squared. So same answer either way. It's just a matter of what you like better. All right, how do we feel about division? Subtract those exponents. Um, I will tell you the thing that I feel like gets left off the most, and I said it once already, but I'm gonna say it again because it always happens. Don't forget that a number like the two over here or the five here is still being taken to that power, okay? It's not just the variables that you take to those powers. All right, um, we will.